Yes, man. Cramp and paralyze weak at conception. Open the border, open the border, open the border, a judge and rule on ya. Open the border, open the border, open the border, a judge and rule on ya. Stop the slavery, I go on in a Libya. Just because man won't cross the border, you are locked up with brother and sister. I sell them to the Arab slave master Train them up and lock them up and rip off with that And this is abomination in the eyes of your Allah Burn a fire pan slavery in Arabia Burn a fire pan slavery in Arabia Yes man Cramp and paralyze we called conception Open the border, open the border, open the border, a judge and rule on ya. Open the border, open the border, open the border, a judge and rule on ya. Stop the slavery, I go on in a Libya. Just because man won't cross the border, you are a fuck with brother and sister. I sell them to the Arab slave master Train them up and lock them up and rip off with that And this is abomination in the eyes of your Allah Burn a fire pan slavery in Arabia Burn a fire pan slavery in Arabia Hello and welcome to Open Borders uh, First time with me starting this show off Which will probably be a disaster but we'll see how we go We got BA as a guest and regular PRC um so yeah i guess i'm kind we'll of a, start by saying i'm kind of yeah, a producer on. actually i'm a kind of a producer. yeah you're the producer today because i'm fucking illiterate but uh i guess we'll start with rest in peace to luke we'll see when he returns like jesus but uh i thought he was doing a bit we were, well he like i don't know see it's it's currently 8 a.m i wake up to all this shit and he he like suspended Tim Smith, who, by the way, is going to see if he can come on in maybe half an hour. So we'll see how that goes. I okay. sent him the link. Um, we'll get our first Englishman on here. By the way, this oh. is a three. This is a three country show. So that's that's exciting. This is a oh, wow. meeting first here. <laughs> yeah. Cross continental. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I woke up to like he suspended Luke. Uh, he suspended Tim, and then he regretted it and suspended himself for two weeks. And I finally got it out of him that he's actually just not. He's not doing too well right now. He, he can be a bit of a stress head, so I think he's just going through some shit. Um, I know work's been really, yeah, work's been really tough. Um, Do you think it's because he doesn't like me and he knows I'm on, and then he was like, "I don't want to be on a PA." It's tough. I think yeah, I, he he was worried you're going to ruin the show, so. <laughs> <laughs> He, lies. he says he, he he says he's a, uh, a BA guy, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. It's Lukey, it's Lukey think... bits. Well, I'm happy to be on. I've uh, I've all I'm a huge fan of Open Borders. You know, I don't miss I don't miss an episode, so I'm, I'm right. happy to be on. I'm happy to be on. You on day one. <laughs> what yeah, um so. what so what do you usually do on this? You just do ran like Luke comes up with random topics. You talk about it. Yeah, we oh, usually I'll... just. Yeah, go on. Oh, you go. On. No, so um, go. I think I think we should start it the way we always start it. Uh, it a lot of ads are popping up, but it appears that Huntington native and former <laughs> Marshall athletic director, Bob Markham passed away this week. So that's, oh. that's the big news in Marshall. So I just, in honor of Luke, I hope he gets through whatever he's going through, but uh, I'll start it off with Marshall news. Uh, rest in peace to, I think Bob Markin. Uh, also, if you want to try a, a day pass for the, the Herald dispatch, it's two ninety nine, and that just keeps fucking popping up. So I think it's Bob Markham. But that's Marshall news. Yeah, that's wow. that's yeah. I've just seen that as well. That's pretty big. That's pretty serious. I mean, he was eighty seven, but still, that's um, it's pretty do sad. You think, do you think that's why Luke is like is going through something right now because of uh, this this Marshall legend that passed away? Right, and um, and I think he's starting quarterback for the the football team. It's not very good. It's Chad Pennington's son, so I think he's rooting for him. Oh, um, uh, yeah, it's a uh, tough situation over there. That sucks when they when it because Pennington's like royalty, so you have to put his son in, at starting, but he probably sucks. Right. So that's I can't right, have right. that. 
I might pull up his stats. Let's see. He started last year, I think. By the way, good instincts on starting on Marshall News because this is essentially what everyone tunes in for. Yeah. I wonder what else has happened. Uh, I guess, oh, I students guess. are coming back to school in Marshall, and they are preparing for an overflow of, of students. They, they don't have enough houses, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah. See if you I know what they can do? So, do you know what they can do to to help that situation? Hit a me. couple, a couple chartered flights, maybe go missing. You know, let's, <laughs> let's... <laughs> Jesus. Definitely don't <laughs> pull up the meme. Don't pull up is the photo. The, no, is, that. is that too much? Was that too? Was that too far? Over the line. Not, not gonna help the Luke and BA relationship. I'll tell you that fucking much, but. Hey, you know, I'm just trying to nothing, just trying to help. Nothing gets to him like that. that. That generally, what was it? It was at meeting the minds the other day when you 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 pulled up the picture and he got he, he got really serious. <laughs> I remember now. I remember because Luke used to go came on me in the minds like a year or two years ago, and um, I I remember it came to this point where we started making the Marshall plane jokes and he didn't like that. I think that's one of the reasons he left. I don't know, but. I'm glad he's back. Yes, I, great, he was. Great, he was. Great, uh, I. I had a good time with him on uh, me and the minds on Monday. So it was. Uh, it was a fun time. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Like he's a good dude. I don't know why people. Some people seem to actually hate him. I, I think guess. he's just like uh, maybe in the closet a bit. I don't know. That's what Tommy Quinlan was saying. So, but just cut, come out. Come out. The uh, you know. No one cares about that. I think it might be true. And just to we're allies. Him, like, we're allies here. Cole, uh, Cole Pennington played four games last year. Um, he threw for 695 yards, okay. zero touchdowns, and six interceptions. Jeez. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. That's Mark not good at all. He, he's a redshirt red sophomore, so he's got he's got room to grow. And he's going to be their starter? That's the name. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I, let's Google. I just realized as well that I live like two hours from Marshall. I had no idea where in West Virginia it was, but it's like right across the river from Kentucky. And knowing Luke, you're probably more likely to go to a game this year. Oh, fuck yeah. I'm going to one. We're going to uh, <laughs> Marshall Appalachian State. Oh, are you going to go with Luke? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Will yeah. Luke be the first person like online that you've met then? Uh, Online from the KMS world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not like Tinder or anything. I, I thought you were talking about like Grindr. Like, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, okay. Yeah, he's their starting quarterback this year. Can confirm. Mar- Marshall, he's number one on the depth chart. The Marshall Football Club Twitter account hasn't posted in two days. Do they, do they even care about this guy that passed away? It looks like they don't. They don't. <laughs> that's why That's why we're here. So, uh, we, we have yeah. Marshall fans that, that follow this show. That's for sure. They do say they're they're preparing for an upward trend, so maybe maybe they're focused on the future rather than the past. I don't know. I don't even know what Bob Markham did. He could have like gotten to a whole bunch of shit at Marshall, like. But it like, is like news. recruiting violations, or yeah, or like I don't know what he did. Like who knows? Who knows? But it doesn't say like he he was bad. It just says he was a dude who was an athletic director, and he died. Usually, they like to old. lead with, with, with something bad if it happens. I think. Oh, John has confirmed that this will go up tomorrow. So, if you want, Ooh. Ooh. if you I want, wow, you could. I thought about inviting John on, but I thought it'd be irresponsible because you know what are the chances he just says something fucking dumb like Kirk hates. He says a lot of dumb stuff almost on exactly. like, did you, if you listen to me and the Mo, or uh, Mike and the Minna fans on Friday, he was he couldn't even figure out the phone, <laughs> phone lines for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. He, I, I, I think if we're going to talk KMS, I think he is the perfect fit for, um, you know, obviously Coleman is uh says he 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 put called in sick or sorry, not called in sick, he's. He's uh, quit, so I think John is the best best fit because I think Mick gives it a little less professionalism in the booth. You know, this, um, we we got two we got two Coleman fans here, so can I just just in solidarity? Oh, you got three. I'm 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 a Coleman fan. Oh too. shit, he plays the violin. 
No, I don't play the violin. I just have a oh. violin. I don't know how to play this. Let's we'll see if I can make it sound. Yeah. That sounds pretty oh. good. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I like looking looking back. Like looking back now, do you think? <laughs> Do you think the two week suspension, like, would Kirk go back in time and be like, "Oh, I'm not going to suspend this guy two weeks"? Because, no. like, then because looking back, you're like, "Okay, I don't know. Did he overreact a bit? Like, the, like, because Coleman did bring, I think, a level of professionalism to the to that to that role that that like uh, that I don't think Mick is going to be able to fill. Uh, Mick may be right. better on the mic, but I don't think like professionalism. Like Coleman was a, a pro's pro, I think. Yeah, I, I think I think John from Scranton though did pretty well on Friday. Uh, do you think there's any possibility that Coleman quit a while ago and then that this week was like a tryout for Mick and John? Oof. I don't know because I don't think I think if Coleman quit, I think Kirk would say it right away. I don't yeah, think it'd be show topic. Yeah, yeah, I don't think he could. I don't think he could hold that in. And like, I, like I think, I think John is the best, uh, the best replacement. I think, you know, he knows the Minifan world inside and out. Uh, I think that might be his biggest strength and weakness because Kirk kind of makes you choose. It's KMS. You're not friends with these guys anymore, and it's like this is people he became friends with over the last five years. Be but a lot for him. yeah, I think, I think he does have the professionalism aspect where he looks like a pro's pro in the booth. I think on the, all the stuff you do outside the job, I think he'd be good at. Mm-hmm. He, I just think he would have to get a sleep schedule on, on track, you know, cause I don't know. I don't think you could do 24 hours on 24 hours off uh, with KMS, you know, but, but he, he, he oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, no, I was just going to say he made it Friday. Like I think, I think yeah. if he could get Coleman's apartment, that'd be, that'd be apt. You know, if he could be yeah. two blocks away, that would be fantastic. He did call it. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, I think, I think John is the perfect fit, uh, uh, perfect fit. And, and, but I, but then I don't know, Mick, cause Mick, I could see Mick, like you hire Mick three months later. I think he's out three to six months. Like you think Mick has longevity in that role? I like Mick, but he can't roll with the punches. Like John will, John will take a punch. Oh yeah. Um, but Mick is a Mick is a good character on the show. I mean, he yeah. and, and his production was good. Like he, he he pulled up sound. He was you know there was no like delay or anything on it. Um, no drops. But I'm gonna miss the drops. By the way, that sucks. That was the best. Well, that's, yeah, like Coleman was like if you look at the sh- Coleman shows, I think he did. He was always like the drops. It, it, the drops put him like he was better at the drops than Steve. I think like. You know, yeah. he he always like Steve went to the same the well of the same three four drops. Coleman like evolved the drops. He would he would mix in new ones. He, you know, so I don't think I don't think Mick or John do that. Like I don't see John being a drop guy. You know, so really, he yeah, because even like he is a drop guy. No, I don't think so. Because on Meeting of the Minds, I do the drops mostly. I don't know, but oh, maybe that's you. I do a lot of the drops. He does some, but I'm more of the drop guy on Meeting of the Minds than him, you know? So it's a BA to Watertown. No, no, I would be <laughs> terrible. I don't know how to do anything. And plus, I could barely talk. He's got soccer too. So that's got soccer on Friday. That's true. <laughs> Fridays, you know? I don't know. Be, I don't think I don't I don't think I would be good at that draw. Plus, I think if I could I could roll the punches, but then if Kirk really like Kirk will lay into these guys, you know, like if Kirk laid into me, I don't know. I might, I don't know how I would take that. I'd be, I would get real. I, I, I'll, I have a tendency, like I don't really get mad at much, but then if I get really red, I'll like explode. And it's like, I don't know, maybe that would be good for the show, but that is funny. Yeah. So, but, but a hypothetical here, say, say you're Mick, right. And yeah. say Kirk has said that like, when I retire, you get the show and stuff. Yeah. So in that, in that taking, let's just say, let's just for a minute assume that is true for the like purpose it, of this hypothetical. Like he takes it over Game of Thrones style. Like he somehow gets to this, yeah. the, the 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 podcast Jesus chair, you know. Yeah, but let's say he let's say he knows that. Would you want to risk becoming a producer then? If 
if you could screw it up in the short term and possibly screw up a long term, a bigger well, long term thing. So you're it's definitely saying, no longevity in the in the producer job. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's a, well, it's a hypothetical thought experiment. It's all this. So you're so you're saying it him taking the job risks him getting pot like the host job in the future. That's a great question. I, uh, I, when you look at it like that, yeah, you, uh, if, if, if it's guaranteed he takes it over, you don't take the producer job at all. You can't take it. Come in as a third chair one, once in a while, come in as a film producer because you got to think of the, like a, that's a long, like that's a long term investment, you know, when Kirk retires or, you know, commits suicide or, or <laughs> passes away, like Mick fills in, get, get and that, then he's like set for life. The Minifans are like um, an asset, right? If you could, if you could be the the rightful heir to the Minifans, like that's that that's better than any kind of salary, money, or whatever. You know, Kirk's made a career off of it. Yeah, like he, I mean, it's it's a high proposition to say you get the whole keys to the kingdom, and like yeah. I don't I don't I don't know if I'd want to screw it up in the producer role. Yeah, take that short term now for a longer term. Screw he's up. not. He's not gonna last. You know, he's not. Like I like Mick, and don't get me wrong. I know somehow he'll probably turn this and like OBA is a dumb scumbag. You know, I like him, but I don't. I could see him being like he'll last three months. Like he'll have some personal. Like, there'll be a personal vendetta. He'll have a, a new vendetta every week. The reason I disagree with you though is because. And it's another reason why I don't want him in the producer's seat is Mick behind the booth is subdued. There's no personality behind him. Like, he's genuinely talented. He's a funny guy. Even, yeah. like, when he does his solo shows, he's fucking hilarious. But when yeah. he's behind the, the booth, he's, I guess, I think who said it? Was it Steve? Like, there's a lot going on. You know, you've got, you've got a lot of other things to focus on, and it really tones him down. So yeah. I don't know if he'd get into all these beefs. But but do you think like once he gets comfortable in the booth, like all the all the whatever gadgets are are done or whatever you call it, you think then he gets comfortable, then he'll be like, you know, the main Mick Maniac, you know? I don't know. Probably. But yeah. that probably leads to him fucking quitting. So. Yeah, that's what, yeah, that's it. There's that's like the... Mick is like he's all is he's always on a tightrope, no matter what. Like he's <laughs> he's walking a tightrope like you know, but Let me ask you a question. Okay. I, I, are you guys surprised by this? Like, I know that's an obvious question, but I thought I really thought Coleman could just roll with the punches, like like he has done. I'm surprised he couldn't just go in there and on Monday and just take the beating and move on. I don't know if you like. I'm genuinely shocked. I think he. It's like I don't know. I don't think he has faith in himself. Like being, uh, maybe he just doesn't have faith in himself. Be, like but he that's knows crazy. he's, he's so late. confident. He's gonna be no, but I mean, like, does he know he's gonna be late? And he's like, I'm just gonna, I know I'm gonna be fired. Like, I'll be if I'm late again, I'm fired. He's like, I'm definitely how can gonna you be not late. fix that. I don't know. That's I'm just saying for him. I think it's like, how can you not just get up an hour earlier? I don't, I don't fucking understand. It makes no sense. You're you 24. Is <laughs> when you're 24. I wasn't doing that at 24. It's not like I'm. I'm just thinking like in his head. He's like, oh man, what if I, what if I go out with the boys? On like uh you know go because I'm sure he goes out with his buddies or something like I'm sure. Yeah, but he goes the show out. isn't on the weekend, and the one time they have something on a Saturday, like but then like just, but just then it's a whole Friday. thing like hey oh okay we're going here like okay say they said like the one thing where they're meeting that he's meeting remember the one they went to Blink One Eighty Two or whatever and then Coleman was like forty five minutes late. Imagine like okay yeah we're doing this Blink One Eighty Two thing. And then he has to drive, he gets stuck in traffic, and then he's late. And it's like, now the guy has to go an hour early everywhere. Maybe that's getting in his head. He's like, oh, how am I going to do this? Do I want to be in this environment? Maybe he got another job. Like, maybe, like, he has yeah. his buddies, he has his buddy at DraftKings, right? Um, what's the guy's name? The guy. Uh, the one um, he did all the stuff with? The, the, well, yeah, his one buddy works at. Uh, Aiden? Yeah, Aiden. Aiden. That guy Aiden works at DraftKings. Maybe oh. Aiden's like, "Hey, I could get you in there." You know, like I'm sure he has a, a guy that went to private school like that has connections and shit, right? So yeah, basically, what I'm taking away from what you're saying is he doesn't really care about the world. Like he, he's not. In, he's not invested. I think he liked it, but like, yeah, I don't think he like. I don't think he's listening listening to KMS if he doesn't work for KMS. You know, 
Well, and then, well, then my other takeaway would be Kirk's not going to hire someone else from the outside. It has to be like, Mick. He has to give it to Mick, like because he's he 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 said he's not doing a producer search. He's not doing this. It has to be Mick because Mick's the, Mick is legit the only option, like realistic option. Like who's another? Like John, John has to move. move. John would move. Yeah, but yeah, he would, but he, wouldn't he? Yeah, but you don't know that. He says like, yeah, I can move. Like if he has he has a house, his family's there. His girl, his girlfriend has friends and family there. Like moving too doesn't happen overnight. You know? What about one that might sound a bit crazy, but I I genuinely like the guy and I think he'd do well. What about Quinlan? I think Quinlan would do well. I like when Quinlan, he came on. I think he would. Yeah, I, I don't know him that well, but like I started following him on Twitter, and he's fun to follow on Twitter and stuff like that. I I, I just not from that region, so I don't know enough about Quinlan. He's invested he's in, in the world. He's invested in the world. He lives close enough, right? And I think he could he could bust balls and stuff. Like he was on uh, Meeting of the Minds and. And that was a wild time, and he was joking it's around, funny. busting balls, and he was making jokes. And um, so I think he could. I think he could do it. You just don't know. And I think he has the professionalism aspect to it. You know, like Enjoy. Mick, Mick, and Justin. They're two. There's not a like. I know Coleman was young, but he had some aura of professionalism. I don't see professionalism with Mick or Justin. Like Justin is like he he doesn't want that. He doesn't want the the, the stress of that. Mick is trouble, like, yeah. Mick will have a vendetta. Mick, like, he has personal vendettas with people that that slight him. And, that, like, I don't think he could have that if you're, you know, like, you pro- you're dealing with people on a daily basis there. I'm sure, like, I'm sure you have to deal with Barstool. They put in those ads in the podcast. They put in this. Like, the sales team reaches out to you. Like, then if Mick starts getting vendettas with these people, it's like, it's not Mick's place to have vendettas, you know. It's, it's like. Kirk's Kirk could have it, but not Mick. So that's, I don't know. That's where, like, I would, I, I don't, I don't think Mick has the professionalism. Which one of them would would say fuck yeah if they asked if they were asked to go to Canopy Lake Park? Uh, like who, Mick or Colin? out of Mick, John from Scranton, Quinlan, like, cause, cause that's part of the the job is the fun stuff and like the extracurriculars too. So which one of those would be like do you think would be all four of those? I think Mick has the most open schedule. Like I think Mick could do exactly. whatever. So Mick, I think because John also has a fiance and stuff, like what if what if like on the weekend his girl his fiance is like, Oh, we're hanging out and John's like, No, I gotta do this. Like I, I could see I could see Mick being better in that role. Yeah, he Mick has, has the advantage of having nothing going on. Yeah. Like I, I, maybe I want to take it back. Like not professionalism, but I just, I don't know what the word is. It's just you have two. It's like the the booth is two like rookies, you know. But I guess Coleman was sort of a rookie too. So I don't know. What what are, what are our thoughts on Coleman texting this to Kirk? Yeah, you don't call him. How fucking crazy is that? Like surely Kirk is furious. I'm sure Kirk probably preferred it that way. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is they're gonna talk about it on the show? Because I I don't know. I don't know. That's pretty unprofessional. I just wonder what was the final straw? Because if he actually texted yesterday, like, was it the Ted Sellers thing? I think it was. Yeah, you think? Yeah. Do you think it's like he's like, oh fuck, fuck these guys? Like anything I do now is like criticized, or is he like, oh man, I really fucked up there? Because like I don't, I don't. Yeah, like part of me wants to believe that he was like, ah, like that Ted Sellers moment was the one that really made him think, like, ah, I really need to turn some shit around and fix it and stuff like that. But then, like, logic would dictate if that was your real thing, then you come in and like be apologetic and say, I, I, I I realize the error in my ways. So it almost feels like he just realized, like, I, I can't come back from the Ted Sellers thing. Yeah, That's, I think he realized that the hole that he dug is too deep. And especially Kirk spent the whole two weeks basically saying he's not going to forgive him for this and he's fired, essentially. I mean, he didn't like, say that. That's, that's like a little bit of a Kirky bit, too. It is, but if you're if you're the one under fire, like you're... Yeah, no, I under... I, I Yeah, I get it. But yeah, it's like... I don't get why he wouldn't... 
up call like be like you know what i'm done like two weeks ago or maybe he really thought about it or like yeah, exactly. my, or maybe like i'm sure maybe his parents were in, like involved too like hey my your lease is up are you sure you want to do this you can like think about it, like a mom or a dad or that's like very like protective or in your face like hey do you really yeah. want to do this this guy's saying he fires you he's saying like he doesn't like you. your lease is up what what are you gonna do? What if you get fired? Do you, are you gonna sign another year? Like there's all these things going on, and maybe he's like, oh fuck it. But like again, I think that's I don't yeah. know, uh, maybe a cop out. Well, yeah, maybe but I, I yeah, know. I mean, I'm just like like I guess putting yourself in that situation, like your mom texting you, you can come home, it's cool, you don't have to pay the rent there or anything. Your friends are texting you because it's summer, like hey, we're doing this. You're seeing all that, like. It, it could be the safer option to just yeah. just back out and go home. So yeah, I could definitely see that as well. I, I guess I think that's the best take yet. I, was it? Yeah. Is it now twelve months? Are we? Are we on? I think Blind Mike said that. Too. Yeah, because it's it's probably he probably has a month to go, right? Right. So that's if anything, that probably is the most logical. Like, do you want to sign up for another year and probably yeah. get fired and then have to? I don't, I don't. I don't think breaking the lease is financially is his biggest issue. I'm sure that's nothing, but. Just sure go through the rigmarole. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's. I think. Yeah, I. I don't know. I just. I thought he would. Now I was like a big. I thought he would bounce back from it, but. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I want. I. I. I would love to see what he's gonna do next, though. Like, cause what can, like, a lot of people. The pe. A lot of people are saying in the, the troll community or the show hater community or whatever you want to call them. You know, I'm friends with a lot of these guys and so I, sometimes I agree with them. Right. But it's like, okay, if you look at Kirk Minahan's producers, like what, what have they done after the job? Steve Robinson's selling uh, fake, uh, fake documentaries for a hundred <laughs> bucks a pop. Cullinane is on Twitter. I mean, sorry, on TikTok. Who knows what he, like who he's a gig he's guy, he's a gig guy. But like, what is he? Is he? Did he go on to bigger, better things? Did Steve Robinson go on to bigger and better things? Who knows? Um, you look at Gus. Gus definitely didn't. You know, Gus is like Gus was a mistake. And then Coleman. So now, now it's like Coleman's the. Is he gonna take this and like? Okay, I was on this show. Now I'll be part of a bigger show. Or is he just gonna become like a, a bigger uh, show like a I don't know, or is he going to be like an accountant or some shit, account manager or whatever? Yeah, he loves whatever. Cloud too much. You know, he likes so the attention. Like, yeah, or is he going to just be? He's going to start coming on Mike uh, Meeting of the Minds. He'll probably be like a regular on Mike Meeting of the Minds now. Who knows? Like, I can tell how much you want that. No, I don't know. I don't know if you like. I don't know. <laughs> that smile. I. But it's just like so. It's like okay, you look at the career path, like then. Then you you ask you ponder the question: Is the producer of the Kirk Minahan show uh, a, a viable option for like a career in podcasting? Because if you look at the past, like no one's really in that space after, you know. And and it, I don't think it's necessarily Kirk's fault, but it's. Uh, I was going to say, are you saying Kirk's a, is Kirk a career killer? Is that what you saying? Well, no one that's worked for him is in in uh, in podcasting anymore or media anymore, really, right? I mean, logic, you know. yeah. Well, let me posit this to you. Like, as fans of the show, not from, like, a business or anything perspective in that way, Yeah. do you want a producer to come in and be there for five or six years and, and be a steady rock in the KMS ship, or do you like the rotating band of, of producers? That's a great question. It might sound dramatic, but it really is like going through a breakup, though. Like when I remember when, when Steve left, I was fucking broken for like a week. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. Col uh, Cullinane less so because Cullinane really just gave up towards the end. Um, but it really it's hard to transition. Like there's a lot of things to think about. Like yeah, like I was know, really today, right now. Yeah, I was really liking the Coleman era, right? Like the Justin yeah, Coleman, right, me too. Yeah. The, two, the two producer era, maybe if you call it. But I was really liking it. And I know a lot of people say, oh, the show's not the same, but, but I, I found the show better than ever. Um, so uh, uh, but yeah, like when Steve left, I was never, I always hated Steve because Steve was an asshole and he was like a doxer. And like, I guess he was good on the show and stuff. But then by the, I like, I always thought he was an asshole. Cullinane, I liked, but then. 
uh, but then Mike and the Mena fans kind of sewered him because we exposed that he didn't post on Instagram for four months and then he kind of got fired <laughs> after that. But I kind of felt bad about that, but because he was a good guy. But yeah, it's like do you want a steady Eddie? But Justin, I could see as that steady Eddie, right? Like, I don't think just, I think Justin will stay in that seat forever. But then it's like, hey, for Kirk's point of view, do you want someone every year? You have a new producer? I guess it doesn't, it doesn't really, I don't think it changes the, the, the fan base, but I think it, it changes the show every time, right? The show changes slightly, right? Because the producers are a huge, are a huge voice on the show. Yeah, like but I don't know. That's a good question. I can't. I don't even. I don't think I even gave you a solid answer there. <laughs> what do, would you prefer? Do you want to stay? Like, you want so this is the next producer for the next five years, or you're you're cool with the every year, year and a half? There's a new guy. Uh see, and that's such a loaded question in itself too, because I do enjoy the the producer search and and all that stuff, but at the same time, if you're telling me. That if if you're getting a rotating cast of characters, they're all going to be in the world right now. So you're going to have John, you're going to have Mick. So then what you're opening up is the potential that in six months, there is no John in, in the KMS world. There is no Mick in the KMS world. So I guess for that reason, I would want a steady Eddie producer, as you as you put it. Yeah, it's all getting another like, producer search, by the way. No, no, I no, said that already. It's also like. I think if he wants a top tier guy, you have to pay that too, you know? Like if if he kind of said like uh Coleman and Justin are making like 60 and 40 grand whatever it is, right? I'm assuming it's probably around that, you know, maybe like a little bit higher, but if like you what quality are you getting for 60 grand a year, you know? Yeah. What's the, what like, do you think the worst case scenario is? For pay? No, 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 for the producer hire. Because I think what will happen, it'll just, Kirk will just tweet out one day, hey, this guy's the, the new guy. Like, what, what, I think what, it, I think it has to be Mick. I think it has to be Mick. Oh, it has, think, yeah, it has to be one of those two. What if, it what has if, to what be if you Mick. get the notification and it's Matt Carano? Oh, man. I might... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the show might be the show might be great because I would because it is like I hate he's Macron. Yeah, yeah he's Macron is a word, but that might be like a crazy like this. But but Macron becomes producer that and another you know, gay candidate they, by the way. Another 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 ally, you know, another um, an ally. But but. If Carano's the pr- oh man, the, the network's done for sure because I I'm not fucking doing Mike and the Minifans for fucking Matt Carano that weasel. Matt Carano tried to get get me get us canceled back in the day because I was on Sneaker's side for something. He said he said Sneakers was t- uh, targeting his family and shit when he was when he just tweeted you're a dead man. He's like he's coming out. He's he's threatening me. It's like <laughs> dude, chill the fuck out. But yeah, Matt Carano. That that show that show could be crazy, but then I think if Matt Carano settles in, I, I feel like the show changes in a way that I wouldn't like. I don't know. Were we all three in that Matt Carano space a couple months ago? Was yes. that us three? I yes. wasn't in it. No, oh, Sneaks was in it. I, Sneaks. Was oh, okay, in it. yeah, that was the third. That's when that's when Sneakers was pretending to be Montauk. <laughs> I listened what, what for like twenty minutes, and I was just trying to figure out what he was like yapping about. Yeah, I was in there for about 45 to an hour. I think he was yeah. – I can't remember what the exact topic was. but It was – you know. could only match someone's aggressiveness with the equal – you know, the equitable aggressiveness. Or – oh, I, I actually have a, wild, I have a wild card. Uh, what if John Rich says, I'll do it? I don't what hate him. Up? Yeah, he's a, he's a Midwest guy and – that would that would be good, and then that would allow John and Mick to survive for another six seven months. So I would I would be appreciative of that. So, but yeah, what if John Rich right now reached out like, "Hey Kirk, I'm your I'll move I'll move tomorrow," and it's like it could wow. also it could also like result in because the producers here get burnt out. Like he could relapse and get back in heroin or something. Do you think there's also that that when John Rich just randomly like high off his ass just stumbled into the show? Like could that just really like that really just still irks Kirk to the max. Like he's just like, no, nah, yeah. 
But he also also realized like people aren't like Kirk's like a sober guy. Like not everyone's like a sober guy. Like people have a few like because he he calls like he goes those drug guys. He calls people smoking weed doing drugs. Like I, like that's not drugs to me. You know like that's smoking weed. And and like he, I don't know, but yeah, it's it's a it's it'll be crazy. It's a new. Uh, but a lot of people are happy. Like there was a lot of people that that were like for a long time are like fuck this coleman guy the the show now is more about this basketball it's about bits it's about all this shit it's coleman's an idiot we need so people are happy they're like oh maybe there's a big fan base so like maybe i'll start listening again or i'll start listening regularly now that because he's gone so i don't know it's people like, always complain about that fucking stupid shit though yeah it's one of those things that when he goes people are gonna be like oh i miss him he's actually really good <laughs> I think he, I think you'll you'll find because these two weeks you could tell he was gone like no drops the stories kind of like I know he wasn't the best story guy but half of, like Justin doesn't have good stories either clearly you know yeah he's an and Justin brought up Justin brought up Mr Beast like or whatever it's like you know, <laughs> what what do you think about Mr Beast like no <laughs> no one cares about that like Justin you know, sneaky not, very conservative. Yeah, yeah, but and yeah, and and but they'll get in more politics now. Just like you could, it's already happening, right? With the election, it's like it's hard not to talk about it. It's the number one thing that's going on in, in the in the world, right? Or in the U.S. at least. What's going on I in Australia? Really. Yeah, I was like, yeah, is there anything Nothing cool happening in Australia, Jackson? Not not politics based. I mean, last night we uh we beat uh, Spain. In the basketball in the Olympics, I don't know if you guys oh, wow. have been following the Olympics. I know there's a lot of speaking of politics. There's a lot of shit around the opening ceremony, which I couldn't give a fuck. About. I don't know. I don't care about the Olympics whatsoever. I just want to see sports that I like and Australia win. You know what's funny? Um, what's funny is my my buddies were like, "This is." this is disgusting. They're doing the shit about the last supper. And I was like, dude, we're not like, none of us are really religious in this group. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like whatever art is art or whatever, who cares? Like I, I'm not, a, I, I just, uh, I never really get into the Olympics. There's like a few things I'll watch like hundred meter or something or the, yeah. the, 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 the championship bus hockey or, or football or sorry, not football, basketball. You know, so I'm not, I'm not, I, as okay. I got older, I'm not, like in the winter, I, I actually they, prefer they the winter. Oh. The winter yeah. Olympics, I, I prefer them too. Like I like track and field in summer, but like the winter, I love hockey. I love bobsledding. I love yeah. luge. I love those. Those are crazy as hell. Skating is cool. And hockey, like when they had the NHLers in there, that was, those are the best hockey games ever. They should bring that back. Like Olympic hockey was is way better than Olympic basketball because there's way more parity. Like ba Olympic basketball, I don't know. It's going to be U.S. dominating pretty much, right? So maybe and now it's a little bit better, but yeah, Olympic and hockey is sick. And uh, yeah, and it's much better than like Olympic soccer where it's like yeah. 20, 23 and under. Like you, you watch the teams and none of the stars that yeah. you see on TV are, are on those teams. It's just like, what is this? Yeah. But yeah, Olympic, Olympic, uh, yeah. No, hundred meter. I don't know. I uh, it was it was cool the one year uh, in twenty ten when it was in Canada, and Canada like got the most like they got ten gold medals and, and that the Canada and the U S were tied at nine gold medals and then the last game was the hockey game and they won in overtime. Nice. I remember my like my my parents like were because everyone in Canada was watching that is like one of one of those moments and. And my mom called me. She's like, your dad was crying after the win. It was like one of those things. Like mm -hmm. sport really showed your patriotism, you know. So so those things, like the Olympics will give those moments. But, like, I'm not watching fucking javelin and fucking high jump and all that shit, you know. Yeah, how good's like, uh, like table tennis? Table tennis, I love the badminton. I love the weightlifting. How good's Have you seen that? Have you seen that know. sport where they like it's like table tennis and soccer? Where they, they no, it's like it up, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, it's they kick the ball. It's like I don't know what it's called. Here, By the way, I think potentially facts might jump on as well. 
Oh wow. Tech okay. ball. T E Q B A L L. Tech. Tech ball. Oh, here, let me put it on the screen. Like this? Oh, yeah. fuck, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like where they're. Yeah, they're yeah. playing. Oh, yeah, fuck. They're playing soccer ping pong, basically. Or oh, that's table pretty tennis. That's an Olympic sport? It should be, if break dancing is. Is tech ball. See, like, yeah. Can confirm fax is not coming on. <coughs> that's that, was, right. that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> Still waiting on Tim. Tim's at Tim's at the pub, by the way, right now. So oh, nice. to, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know Tim. I don't know Tim. Tim. Uh, Tim doesn't follow me, so I'm gonna tell him he's, he's an asshole. He doesn't follow Please. me. Doesn't he know my my uh, my greatness? <laughs> Well, he watches all the media of the minds. He watches the entire, you know, three hours, and he, he he does love it. I think he's a BA fan. I don't know. I can't. I can't. I think maybe it's because Luke's a hater, and he stands with Luke. Maybe he doesn't follow me because I was gonna. I wanted to DM him something because I like DMing the people I don't know and be like, yeah. "Oh fuck, this was funny" or something. And uh, and then, but I Max couldn't because he doesn't follow me. But uh, Tim, follow BA. Tim, come on, man. Yeah. He's got funny cool. He's got I'm funny just, quips for you. I'm just, funny I'm, cool. I'm just a normal guy, man. I know I have all this uh, clout, you know, over five years, but I'm I'm just <laughs> no, I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> oh man, it's man, so it's funny. Always... I was talking to this. I know this is a random thing, but I was talking about this to someone. It's funny going to the live shows because so I was with Montante the whole time at the live show. And it's funny because, like, so there'll be people that come up, oh, B.A. Montante, man, I love you. I love you guys, whatever. But then there's, like, a p good portion that just go up to Montante. or like, oh, Montante, you're the man. And then they look at me. They're like, oh, hey, I'm John. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm Mike. How you doing? So it's funny to see, like, the the people that, like, watch the YouTube stuff and then the people that have no idea about that stuff. So it's, Do you uh, consider yourself, like, the Canadian Montante, the – I, I found it. Uh, Montante is part of my coaching tree. So it's uh, Montante used to do a, a gam a, a stock show where he would write his stocks <laughs> and give a stock tips. I lost like three, four hundred bucks for investing with Montante, you know. So yeah, and now he's running scams. The rise of Mont no Montante is a great guy. The rise of Montante is uh, it, it is funny. He was in. I first met him because he, me and him were in some Rich Kelleher Twitter chat. And Montante and Kelleher were going at, at it about politics. Because Mont Keller is a super lib. Stickers. Montante is a, a super concerned. They're going at it. And then Keller is like, he kicks him out. And he's like, this Mont this guy's crazy. Like, this guy's a, a psycho. And then, oh, yeah. and then, so that's all I knew about him. Then he came on one of the one of the media and the mind streams that we did, we were watching a football game or something. And then, and, and, and then the next episode, someone put his face, uh, his LinkedIn picture in a scuba mask. And then he's called, then he's calling me like, BA, what's your name? What's your grandma's name? What's your address? And I'm like, I kept ignoring it. Cause I was like, I don't, this guy's a psycho. Like, I don't know. And then I called him and I was like, Oh, the guy that did is a Canadian guy. He's a cool guy. He's just joking around. He's like, what's your name? What's this? And I told him all the I told him all the info. And then he tells me all his info. He's like, I just wanted to know you, you're a real guy. And then we had like a three-hour talk. And, and then since then it's history. So Montante, Montante's a genuine guy. He just yeah. Montante just can't take the chirp sometimes. Like if you make like there's the account, the Montante 40k account. And then yeah. it's funny, it keeps going down. Now I think it's Montante 5K or something. And that's just sneakers. I had sneakers. I think so. I don't know. It could be a conglomerate. It might be sneakers, but uh, but Montante hates that. And then and then if you bring it up, he gets all mad and it's like, man, it's just take the uh, you got to but got to take a joke sometimes. So he does. Is that like, why he's like left the world? Montante. He's yeah, still he, like, the he doesn't world. appear on anything anymore. Yeah, I know, but he barely appears on anything. anything anymore. Well, Montante, I always like because he doesn't like. He's one of these guys. I don't like group chats or something like that. So I when like I would always text him like a week in advance for Mike and the Minna fans. So he so he would come on a lot like that. But um 
yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's summertime. Maybe he's working. I he's supposed to come to Toronto actually in a couple weeks, so I should be. It should be. Uh, I should see him here. Is that what you I live? love Toronto? I live in Toronto. Yeah, oh, okay. I live like right in the heart, pretty much. Yeah, I love Toronto. It was a Toronto's fun good. time. Yeah. Paul, my political stuff. We just got ready to drink, drinks in grocery stores. Thank you, thank you, Doug Ford. So, is it true that your alcohol is owned by the government? Yeah, yeah. The LCBO, wow. Liquor Control Board of Ontario. They're mono- wow. They're a le- they're a legit monopoly, like a a true a true blue monopoly. No, I just happen to know that. It's a random fact that I know. Yeah. The, but uh, do you guys know Rob Ford? Have you ever heard? Like, you remember oh, Rob yeah. Ford? Oh, dude, that guy's so funny. That guy's like, he, he was my idol. I Is he still guy. alive? No, he passed Rest away. In peace. Uh, in peace. He passed away. Oh, there he goes. But when Rob Ford, I was going to university in Toronto when Rob Ford like got caught smoking crack, and everyone, these guys were like, fuck this guy. And I was like, I was like, Rob Ford. He, he's a man of the people. Like that guy from nine to five, he's doing a great job. After five, he gets a little fucked up. I was like, I like to party with Rob Ford. Rob Ford was such a man of the people. He gave his per he gave his personal cell phone out, and he he's like, I answer all the calls within the week. And he was like, he like he 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 the all the congress all the council people that were voted in were getting like four million dollars in benefits a year. Or something uh, all together with free uh, subway, free parking, free this, free that. He's like this. Uh, he's like you guys make over 150 grand a year. I'm taking it all away. You guys should have to pay for that. He was a beauty. He was the best. Do you think like in like like if he would have done what he done like 10, 15 years later than he did, that he would just be like the biggest star in the world right now? Well, he went on. Which, he was a pretty big star. That he went on. He was yeah. on Jimmy Kimmel. He was on. He went. Yeah, he was a big because because his brother now is the premier of Ontario. He's the one that did the the ready to drink, uh, got the got the ready to drink uh, vodka sodas in in in, uh, in grocery stores now. So his 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 brother's kind of like living on his his brother's uh, living off his brother's legend. So, but he was a great guy. My university picture is. Uh, my uh, gown is out and it says Rob Ford for Prime Minister. So. <laughs> So that was. Uh, can you put? Can you like pull up any videos? Because YouTube is just it's full of great stuff. This seems. I can pull it up. Just can just you put it in the pri- football. Can you put in the private chat, or you want me to just search Rob Ford? Just, just search Rob Ford crack. <laughs> this is a great video. <laughs> Rob, Rob Ford. He also has a line. They're like, "Did you say it's something like about? Uh, did you say something about?" She's like, I never said I wanted to lick that girl's pussy. I have enough to eat at home or something like that. Let's see. Rob Ford YouTube. There's him like there's him like in the uh in parliament drunk. Here, going, this is him his most outrageous moments. You want to see this? this is the crazy. highlights. Yeah, yeah, we'll put it on. Oh, this is beautiful. This is the best see, show. This ever. is open love- borders, BA. This is open borders. This is I what love we do. Rob. Okay. This is his Rob Ford most outrageous moment. This is the oh, best. Hulk Hogan in the fucking mix. This is the best politician of all time. I'm telling you. <laughs> what did you? I just Andrew. Heard you. That's right. You said you were a gay. What did you say? What's what did you just say? You called him a you fat. Call me a fat. What? I pitch voice. You call me a fat right in front of him. Right in front of him. What did you do it? That's exactly what you did. That is a verbal assault. That is a verbal assault. And you want and you want me to have a public meeting to discuss this? Why don't we have a public lynching? Excuse me, guys. (laughs) (laughs) What the fuck? Cool. Yeah. 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 These are <laughs> I need to do his funniest okay. moments. There has been a serious accusation from the Toronto Star that I use crack cocaine. I do not use crack cocaine, nor am I an addict of crack cocaine. Holy. Did not have sexual relations. Yeah, yeah right. Real, real, real. 
Holy. Mayor, have you purchased illegal drugs in the last two years? <laughs> He's like literally. <laughs> This is, this is called yeah, on, on, on my <laughs> Yes, I have. Um, I, I saw a video. Um, it, it's extremely embarrassing. There's been times when I've been in a drunken stupor. <laughs> I was uh, very, very <laughs> inebriated. I <laughs> was uh, uh, obviously, I was extremely, extremely inebriated. I don't even remember after some of the stuff that you guys see me this day have been in. It's a problem. Have I done drugs? Yes, I have. <laughs> but the count, it's self-inflicted. Will you get help? I'm not an addict of any sort. So I'm not quite sure. Why you're saying I need help? Yeah, uh, brother, I've heard funny things, but you gotta. No, I think that give me some clone. Oh, I do want some clone. I get some clone. Do you think you have an addiction problem with alcohol? Absolutely not. Do you think Hell you yeah. have an addiction problem with substance abuse and illicit drugs? Absolutely not. I've called you pathological liars, and you are. So why don't you take me to court? Let, let the courts decide. You, you guys, you guys are liars. You <laughs> don't crack cocaine. It's a great guy. Yes, I have some milk crack cocaine. <laughs> when, but sir? no, do I? Am I an addict? No. When have you have I tried it? No. Um, probably in one of my drunken stupors, probably approximately about a year ago. You probably. obviously, um, okay. so you, did, you did, didn't obviously did, tell me the truth. Did you submit? Ooh. That's okay. Can you get off my driveway, please? Can you get off my property, please? Can you get off my driveway, please? Can you please? Can you get off my driveway? Can you get off my property, please? Can you get off my property? Can you get off my property? I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Hey, thank you. Yellow 80. Yellow 80. Here we go. Oh, dear God. Oh, that was the best. Moving on. You guys can do what you want. I apologize <laughs> again. I'm sorry. That's all I have to say. Oh, and the last thing was um, Olivia Gondak. It, it says that I wanted to eat her pussy. Olivia Gondak. I've never said that in my life to her. I would never do that. I'm happily married. I've got more than enough to eat at home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you as a legend. You as a legend. Such a badass Jeez. response. <laughs> He was a legend. So I, uh, when I was in university, I knew a guy that uh, he was a high school football coach. And, and he said that there was a lot, it was in a bad part of town. And there was a lot of like minority guys that would have like a lot of problems. And he said, Rob Ford would let them stay at his house. He would help them out. He would, he would like, he would do all this stuff. So he was, he was a heart. He had a heart of goal. Like the guy partied hard. He was, I, but I always say, who who hasn't had a drunken stupor? Like who hasn't? Like there's you, you could there's videos of me. There's videos of probably anyone there, when you're out getting fucked up. Like so like that. that well, Rob, speaking like, of speaking of, uh, we still haven't on this show addressed <laughs> my absence a couple of weeks ago at PRC. Oh yeah, you there, were you, speaking of violently hungover, <laughs> drunken stupor. Maybe involved. Let's just say uh, that I had the uh, John Peltier uh, treatment. Oh, Does that ring a bell? Oh, it was yeah. That was quite a. What does that mean? I don't, I don't yeah, want, I'm I don't trying to like go through my head. <laughs> oh, oh. Wait, you don't. I, wait, you don't know what I mean. I, I, I think I know what you mean. Medicinal. Ketamine. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. <laughs> I was trying to do a little bit more slow. Oh, that, yeah, slow. that was. Oh. I thought that maybe you. Could also be up all morning, like banging broads, like John Peltier. Yeah, the guy's big dick, long dick. Oh, yeah. I wish I could say that. I was, I was throwing up in my fucking bar, so that's that was my night. <laughs> Probably I didn't lie. Like, yeah, all, all I said was, all I said was, um, I feel fucked up and I can't stop throwing up. That's that's all I. <laughs> but, like uh, piece but, that together. But the Rob Ford, the best when he says, I, "Olivia Grondack." Said I want to eat her pussy. I'm happily married. I have more than enough to eat at home. What a lot. That's that was a classic. <laughs> what a classic. 
He kind of reminds me of uh, in Indiana. We had a guy named Bobby Knight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the he's got a little bit of Bobby Knight in him, especially the golf outtakes, which were fucking hilarious. Yeah. Was he like a was he like on drugs and stuff, or was he just a nut? Uh, no, he was just a very honest, very outspoken asshole. Like he was a, right. his, he was a coach of. Didn't they have a TV show like about his team? There yeah, they like, did. And well, they made a movie too called Blue Chips, which was based on the 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 IU program, and IU was actually in it. But he did. Uh, he did. In, <laughs> this is kind of local, but he did like golf lessons, and like he just couldn't hold his temper. So he'd just be like signing up, and he'd be like, "All right, now what you want to do when you're hitting out of the sand is aim an inch behind the ball." And then he just he he whiff it obviously because he wasn't very good at golf, and it was just like three minutes of the fuck is this shit? And it was amazing. <laughs> That's funny. What a legend. Yeah. Legend. Got, Rest in peace. He's passed away, right, Bobby Knight? Yeah, but like, kind of the tie bow on it. Like those three, like Bobby Knight, Montante, and Rob Ford. We all yeah. like them because they're just like genuine, honest dudes who like. Yeah, yeah they're just themselves, and you just gotta appreciate that. Yeah, 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 for sure. I love uh, uh, three of my favorite guys now. Bobby Knight, so uh, uh, he's up there. Up there, my books now. You know, um, so Jackson. What uh, what uh, what so what do you got on the docket? So uh, do you actually? I want to ask: Are you a Houston Texans fan because of Sketch? No, oh. yeah, I didn't know who he was until like three months ago when he you know, he was on like Theo Vaughn. It's pretty funny that guy. Oh no, he announced one of the draft picks at the draft. Yeah, he's a funny guy. Yeah, um, he is funny. Have you seen? Have you been watching any like training camp footage, PRC? of the Colts? Uh, yeah, I just a little bit. I saw. Richardson and um, got, or uh, the dude. I don't know. I thought you said tranny cam. I was like, holy fuck, this is getting this. this is That's on Saturday yeah, nights. Yeah, we go there as oh, well. Okay, cool. we got about four more hours till my wife goes to sleep, and then <laughs> and I'm all up on it. No, I saw Anthony Richardson. I blanket on the receiver's name. He uh, Cincinnati's in his third year. He's been dropping a bunch of balls. I keep saying Anthony Gonzalez because he's like a prototype of that guy, but it's not him. But yeah, no, Colts look pretty good. Are you? Um, you're a big Colts fan. I am a big Colts fan. Richardson, but he's a great uh, fantasy quarterback if he doesn't get injured. But uh, he, I think he, the Colts have a great, they have a great defense. Do they still have Taylor? Yeah, he stayed. It was. Uh, it, it's going to be good. good. Yeah. Quality. And that um, you say the other healthy. receiver from North Carolina, didn't, Josh Downs. I did remember that name. Oh, yeah. uh, he he had some flashes last year. I think he's going to make a big step up when he gets in. Richardson was like a fantasy football hack. Like he would get two t- two rushing touchdowns a game, pretty much when he was yeah. when he was in. It was crazy. Were you I big in the yeah. um the daily fantasy yeah. back in the day? No, I just got into like I have a, a league with a bunch of buddies that uh, uh, been I've been in it for four years now. So I just do the one league. Me and my my dad's like my co-manager because the guy's retired. All he does is all he does is football. Like he <laughs> he, he wakes up at six a.m., makes a pot of coffee, he's listening to <laughs> listening to football podcasts, all this shit, doing the stats. It's crazy. So yeah. Well, the 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 reason why I kind of brought training camp up is BA. I just sent you a link. Um, Alec Pierce, a, sorry. Oh yeah, white guy out of Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. Pull up, uh, pull up this, pull up this tweet, BA. Right. My God, you guys. Because I'm a, I'm a. I don't know where I stand with Trevor Lawrence. Um, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence was like that was my QB for fantasy, but for two years in a this, row, and he last year. It's terrible. Yeah, and this this tweet's kind of makes me nervous. Well, not nervous because I'm rooting against the Jags, but what's the tweet? Can't be here. I got it. I got it. I'm not the fastest of this shit. Oh, this is it. Oh, where is he? He's coming. He's coming here. Sixteen. Did you get back to the start? 
Is it lagging on my end or is this everyone? It's lagging. Here we go. And a nice fumble. Ah. <laughs> oh, he fumbled right there. That song was yeah. That song was relevant when the Jags were, so <laughs> I don't know, and you get the oh, backups yeah, falling yeah, in. They, they got... they... There's Mac Jones, by the way. There's I, Mac I don't know, Jones. Mike, I've, I've got a hot take. I think Mac Jones will be starting after the bye week. Oh yeah, I like kids catch her right out of the ball. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wow. I think, yeah, That's the crazy. AFC South is either the Colts or the Texans this year. It's not going to be the Jags or the Titans. No, no, I don't believe in Will Levis. He had slashes, but I'm not a, not a fan. The Texans, I, I think, the Texans have a – they they got a – the Texans got a lot of guys. Like, didn't they, yeah, I think, I think really it's the Texans' be. year. Yeah. I think it's the Colts in the next start. two years, but it's the Texans next year. Yeah, it really depends on Richardson's health. Is he is that good? I think. Yeah, but he also he did get injured like three times in five weeks last year, so that's not. Yeah. Interesting. So you don't you don't have a team bay, do you? No, like I think it would be disingenuous. Just be, I guess the Bills would be the closest thing. Like I'd probably I kind of like always cheer for teams, but the I think I would cheer for the Bills. The Bills over anyone. Like I'm kind of like a band a bandwagoner, you know. But, That's um, the closest to Toronto too. Yeah, but I wouldn't say I'm like a diehard. Like I don't want. I'm not like a Bills mafia guy. But if the I usually usually I'm cheering for the Bills in the playoff. Like I, there's not really a team I would cheer over the Bills. But I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself like a diehard Bills fan. Are you a, a Argonauts fan? No, I don't. Th- I'm more I'm more of a Bills fan. I'm more of a Colts fan than an Argonauts. <laughs> popular CFL. CFL. It's it's very niche. Like it's very very niche. Like I don't. Like, I don't like. Think do can do Canadians follow American football? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah. So but they, but they but they follow the NFL. Yeah, like more Canadians follow the NFL than the CFL. But the CFL the CFL is b- bigger in like Western Canada where. The, where they don't like it's bigger in the uh, Saskatchewan and Man- uh, Manitoba, Regina, uh, Alberta, Regina. <laughs> but there's no like teams in that radius, even from America, too. There's not like the Boise Broncos or the Montana, whatever's. I read they yeah. had a um, they had a period in the 90s where they they started adding American teams. I couldn't tell you exactly who, but the CFL but- for a while had a bunch of American teams in there. Yeah, they, they did. Really? They had a bunch. Yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, they had a bunch. But I think the CFL at one point, they they had some quality guys, like, and then they would get poached by the NFL. But I don't think there's been a guy in a while that's went from the CFL to the NFL. Like, you know, because I'm pretty sure most of them, unless you're like a top tier guy, like most of them have like a second job and shit, you know, like they're playing. Like it's not a, it's not a league where you're like, uh, you can dedicate your full, full time to it. Like there's a couple that there's going to be the stars that make money, but then I'm sure like there's probably the league minimum like is probably really low, probably like fifty grand, sixty grand. I'm guessing some people are making. They had a, like a whole American league in the '90s, apparently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The San San Antonio Texans, Shreve, yeah. Shreve, Shreveport Pirates, the Memphis Mad Dogs. That's a good one. Las Vegas Posse. That's a terrible name. That's a horrible name. Sacramento Gold Miners is stupid too. I mean, I get the point, but you already got the 49ers right there. It's like, and the CFL is weird. Like, it's like there's all these weird rules, like with with the kicking and shit, and like there's only three downs. Holy shit! There was the um the Baltimore FC that played in 1994. Yeah, they averaged thirty seven thousand. Yeah, so the That's the insane. CFL. The CFL league minimum is seventy thousand dollars. So the league, so there's a bunch of people making seventy grand a year, you know, playing there. Jeez, still more yeah. than the KMS producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, if you're, you pretty much if you're a KMS producer, a couple bonuses, you're the same as the CFL league minimum guy. You know, like a kick up. Yeah. Is that more than Caitlin Clark's year one salary? Yeah, I think she's on seventy six thousand. That's crazy. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Like a four-year contract is like three thirty or something. 
that's like saying to me like oh yeah i have a five-year deal with a, with my employer making a five hundred thousand a year or five hundred thousand you know i do think that five years five-year deal five hundred thousand they if call you, you in the office and like flip you a contract and shit. <laughs> we're gonna sign you ten years, ten year deal. Uh, yeah, what would be the Pat Mahomes deal? Six hundred thousand. Like, there should be know? like an office shams too. Somebody who tweets that it's like yeah. BA has just signed a four year, three hundred thousand yeah. dollar accounting contract. Yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> I would say uh, if you to get it up front, maybe it's worth it. I guess like a signing bonus yeah yeah you get it like pay it pay it out in all bonuses you know <laughs> but yeah like, <laughs> yeah i remember seeing caitlin yeah. clark i'm like i think i think my four-year deal would be better it's better than hers you know <laughs> <laughs> problem is nike's not calling your cubicle to be like hey <laughs> yeah, yeah, i don't got sponsors we really love your pivot tables. We'd like to sign you to it. <laughs> My only sponsor right now is Spiegel Scrap because uh, Montante gave me a hat. Actually, I Montante didn't even give me this hat. One a, a, a KMS fan, typical dummy. Uh, uh, what do you mean? You can just buy them? He sent it to me. I got it. He mailed it to me. He was like yeah, this, uh, this guy who bought it. This guy bought it. I think he had it. Some I don't know. I forget the story. He had he like. He had one and he sent one to me because they all, all the guys are jealous that I have a Carhartt one. I guess. Yeah. Like, yeah. So. Yeah. You could easily make that on like custom ink or whatever that it should, yeah. but, but yeah. you can't get the Carhartt. That's, yeah, that's, a that's how you know it's legit. It's actually a very nice hat. So I, I wish it didn't like, I, I guess I can't say this, but we'll cut this out. I wish it didn't say Spiegel scrap so I could wear it, like wear it out. You know, because why can't you wear a Spiegel scrap? Yeah, why can't you I wear guess, it? I guess I can. I don't know. I, I I guess I can. Why not? It solidifies you. Like you see a man in a Spiegel scrap hat. Like the women are that's like, a that's man. a man. I that's a man. Like, and people ask, like, what is that? And like, what am I? I how, how do I explain that to people? Like, oh, my friend Montante that I met online five years ago. Uh, he has this hat. So another online guy mailed it to me. <laughs> that's a cool story though actually yeah, so maybe the ladies will yeah. like maybe the ladies that's a story for the ladies eh? the ladies will like that one so if Montante if, Mon if Montante listens to this he's definitely going to be texting me and be like I can't believe you said that about Spiegel Scrap you know I'm sure he'll listen yeah maybe this could be a big one you know this could be uh, you got you got to say Coleman talk but we'll tweet it out uh, yeah you got to you got to don't bury the lead on the tweet be like talking right. Coleman yeah, John said he'll put it up tomorrow, so or put it up for Sunday, so it should be uh, it should be a good reaction for people. But, oh, tomorrow is Sunday, isn't it? Well, I thought it was Monday here. Yeah. So I'll, well, I'll listen to work. Borders, that's what time. That's yeah. good. We have open yeah. borders to know this the time zones. And stuff. Actually, ta speaking of time zones, uh, uh, Jackson's like, okay, can we do this at six p.m. I was like, yeah, no problem. Then he texts me at, at 4.30 or 4.45. And it's like, okay, we're ready to go now. And I'm like, I'm like wait, wait, what? what? <laughs> I didn't fucking say that. You, I, you, <laughs> you texted me here. I'll just say, maybe I misread it. but And I was like, bro, check. bro, I thought it was 6 p.m. I'm home. And I'm going to be home. I did the same thing. He texted me. He goes, can you do it in 15 minutes? And I was like, 5.50. And then I like no, immediately no. was like, "Okay, you have no concept of, of time zones. I apologize. Well, so this is where I this is where I got yeah. it wrong. Because he said, yeah, I'm reading you, still good to, you still good to go? We're talking about going live. I thought he meant like going live uh, now. And I said, oh, fuck you. He said six. I'll be there in 10 minutes. And then I didn't know he meant going live. I didn't know this. I, I like didn't. I assumed this wasn't a live show. Um, it's not, but I just thought it's a, this is a big day in the, in the world. Yeah, maybe we should have. I don't know. I, I just, that's like, a, I don't want to like uh, use my, use the power to go live whenever I want. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I get you know it. What I mean? Yeah, that's, that's a John thing. John could say John could make John probably would have been like yeah okay go live but then again I don't want to cut the four twenty guys you know I, th I don't think that would have happened we're not it's different I don't, I'm uh I know I I overthink things sometimes plus we're here I, talking I, about Cole Pennington yeah I think I think it'll be a great show either way I think it'll be oh fun. yeah the chat then will dictate it it would be all Coleman talk for, for forever. 
I don't know why my hat is now looking like a some kind of gay swashbuckler, but he kind of looks so big you can fit the headphones there. Huh? That's your hat so big that you can like this is tight. Oh, I'm You're pulling wearing... it down as hard as I can. Like this is it hurts my Heard head that. to do this. Yeah. You kind of look like uh, uh, Zoro's Zoro's step uh, step brother. You know the guy that's like trying to be Zoro, but he's he's just like he can't. He couldn't. He couldn't make it. You know. <laughs> I look, yeah, like like the hipster in like the old west days and shit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're like I'm gonna go all. I'm not going all black. I'll go all like uh, teal or gray or whatever the color is. This hat came in clutch today, though. I was golfing and it was like 92 out. So. Would you? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Were you gonna ask I if I participate that. in the golf tournament? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. That. That's a that's a pretty good price. That's not a bad price. To be I didn't honest. think it was bad. 150. Yeah. Is cheap. I, I think it's. I think if it was like 200 or something, then you could start saying. But 150 is bad. You get a meal and stuff. Yeah, like that's uh that's how I'm playing in a, a scramble yeah, like ribs. a tournament in like. Monday morning and it was 160, so it's like same price. Yeah, I don't, like I was saying, like how much you really make off that? Like you make like 30 bucks a guy. Like if there's if there's a uh, uh, hundred guys, 30 bucks a guy is what three grand? Like that's not a lot. Of, that's you like, make a bunch of money in the in the in the bullshit. Like the uh, you buy five mulligans or you know pay but, ten bucks oh, like, and you think you're making and, like. Ten grand, like what's like ten grand's not a whole lot of money, like you know. For like, you also think they're getting a hundred people. But I'm saying just to make the math easy, because I'm not good at. Uh, I don't want to take the calculator out. Well, I mean, you do a hundred, a hundred people buy ten mulligans for ten bucks. That's, uh, you know, a thousand yeah, bucks right there. Yeah, huh? yeah, grand. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and then if it's like, okay, Montante, get, so they make five grand. Montante gets like two grand. Kirk gets three. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's a huge. It's not really a money maker. It's more of a fun, fun time. You know? Yeah, it's a it's a bringing people together kind of thing. Everybody loves golf. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, or just do it at cost. Like, say if he doesn't want to make money off it, it's like, hey, okay, the cost to do this is a hundred. We're giving it for a hundred bucks if he doesn't want to make money. You know. You think it'll be like a live watch along? Like they're gonna bring Bobby Costa? Like a, a live the live golf tournament? I think that's too hard to figure out. And it yeah, like the top tier YouTube golfers are doing live stuff now and it and they're doing it and it sucks. Like it's, it's it, lagging and shit. The world isn't ready for, for live golf tournaments on YouTube yet. <laughs> like I'm sure service sucks in all those golf courses, right? Like, you know. And then you'd have to have, you know, John from Scranton lagging around a 50 pound wireless backpack all day too to get shit going. Yeah. It was seen that disaster. There's no way he's going to, he would be like, yeah, yeah, it'll work. And then it wouldn't work at all. Then <laughs> half yes. an, an hour and a half later, it's like, oh, it's working, but the go up, the tournament's done. You know? It's just blank for like 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, just John cuts in in the middle of the field. John's he's like, like yeah, 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 you yeah. motherfuckers <laughs> wanted a golf tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but before we um before we wrap up, I'm just gonna I'm looking at the tweet now. Penn has put out a couple hours ago. Geez, almost four hours now. Uh, who do you want as the next producer? We've got 65 percent for John, 35 for Mick. So and this yeah. is 200 votes. Yeah, no, no. I, the right. People want John. I think John. John. John is John is the smart choice. I think, but is it's just is it, it is it. Yeah, I would vote John. I would vote John. I want. Yeah, I want to see John. All right, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. All Thank right. You, so rest in, uh, rest in peace, Luke. My Hopefully mouse is broken, so you guys are just gonna have to cut me off. So I'll just. Yeah, I'll hit the end. All right. Uh, All right. We, All right, we just usually wait for the camera. Goodbye. There. Yeah. That'll do. Well, the mouse. Hey there, knowledge seekers. Thank you for watching Open Borders and for sharing our videos and being a part of our global community. Around here, we all eat from the cornucopia of knowledge at this table, so be sure to grab a seat at our table next time. Thanks, Legal. Open Borders is a sociological experiment conducted by Marshall University. Watching Open Borders constitutes an agreement to participate in our study. 
We thank you for your cooperation. And sell them to the Arab slave master Train them up and lock them up and rip off with that This is abomination in the eyes of your Allah Bonafire upon slavery in Arabia